Good day everyone. In today's lecture, we will be discussing about galvanometers. We will be discussing about D Arsenal galvanometer which is used for the measurement of DC quantities. Then we will be discussing about vibration type of galvanometer which is used for the measurement of AC quantities. We will be looking into the principle, the operation and the construction of these type of galvanometers. And in the next part of the video, we will be discussing about how a galvanometer can be converted into an ammeter and how a galvanometer can be converted into a voltmeter. We will be discussing about galvanometers. Galvanometer is an instrument which is used in any circuit for detecting the presence of sm small amount of currents or voltage that is felt across two different points. Now this galvanometer, it can also be used to measure the magnitudes of both the current and the voltage. Now as we know that when in bridge circuit if to, to check whether the bridge is balanced or not for that purpose we will be using galvanometers we will be using. So as we know that in electrical we have two different types of supply that is a DC supply and an AC supply. So for DC supply we use D Arsenal galvanometer and for AC supply we use vibration type of galvanometers. So we will be discussing about these different types of galvanometers. So first let us start with the discussion of D Arsenal galvanometer. So D Arsenal galvanometer it is used when the supply is DC now here one thing to be noted is that D Arsenal that is the working principle of D Arsenal galvanometer is called as D Arsenal, D Arsenal movement now D Arsenal movement is nothing but for example if I am having a permanent magnet if I am having and in between this permanent magnet if I am keeping a coil and through this coil if I am passing some current now as this current is passing this will make this coil to be a temporary magnet now this temporary magnet and the permanent magnets flux will interact and there will be some movement in this coil now this movement it is called as D Arsenal movement so this is the basic very basic principle working, uh, working principle of the D Arsenal galvanometer now moving on to the construction the construction the major there are majorly five different parts that we have to discuss in the construction of a D Arsenal galvanometer that is moving coil damping suspension indication and zero setting now this is the uh, diagram this is the construction diagram for a D Arsenal galvanometer now looking here we can see that the first part it is the moving coil now moving coil is nothing but as said in the principle a current carrying element should be there placed in between the magnets so the moving coil is the current carrying elements that is placed in between the magnets that is this part is called as the this part is called as the moving coil now here we can see that the moving coil the current passes through the moving coil now this moving coil it is suspended in between these two magnets that is the two poles of the magnet it between the north pole and the south pole this is suspended that it is suspended so that it can uh, give a turn in its vertical axis now here we can see that this moving coil it is arranged in in between that is these two permanent magnets when we look at the top view this top view is somewhat in this manner so it means that it is arranged in between a uniform radial and horizontal permanent magnetic permanent magnets so that we can uh, so that this is the top view looking at the top view we can see that it is arranged in between horizontally that is the horizontal in between horizontal flux it is arranged but looking at the direction of movement we will get the direction of movement to be vertical now we can see here that the iron core there is a iron core that is looking at this looking for the top view we can clearly make out that there is an iron core and on this iron core the windings are made now as I am using an iron core this iron core is made of a material which has which reluctance which whose reluctance value is very low. So this means that whenever uh, it is uh, magnetic flux is felt through it, the, it it will produce a strong magnetic field for the coil to move inside. Now here we can see that the the moving coil moving coil consists of a metallic former and on this metallic former some windings are made so this is the basic construction of a moving coil the second part that we are having is damping so as we have already discussed in damping that if i am using a metallic former or if i am using an iron core what i can do is i can get eddy current damping so here we will be using eddy current damping will be use will be using the third part is suspension now here we can see that 
the moving coil it is suspended in between the magnets that is in between the two poles of the magnets it is suspended now it is suspended using a ribbon arrangement that is there is an upper suspension and there is a lower suspension now here we can see that the upper suspension it is made of a ribbon type material ribbon type material means it is a very flat uh, very flat thin strip of uh, iron or any metal now what will happen is if this is rotating because as this is rotating it will try to regain its shape that is if this is rotating if some bend is there what will happen is this will try to regain its shape so this is the upper suspension so upper suspension is made up of a, of a very flat and thin metallic piece now here we can see that it is hanging that is the uh, that is the ribbon suspension it is the, this is ribbon acts as the upper suspension and it is hanging and for this support in the lower portion we have a lower suspension now lower suspension is nothing but that is what i have done is a wire piece i have taken and this wire i have winded it wounded it like a spring and this is just a uh, just a wire which is wounded like a spring or it is just a coiled wire and this uh, makes the lower suspension now we can see here that there is very negligible effect of torque that is there is there is very negligible controlling torque because of the coiled wire now here we can see that uh, one more one important thing uh, there, that we can note from the suspension is that this suspension it is as it is very uh, very um, f flat or very thin strip of metal what will happen is if this element or if this uh, meter if it is jerked this ribbon suspension it can break so we have to take, uh, take care that is as the upper suspension is not mechanically strong this should be handled carefully to avoid any jerking or there will be damage to the uh, instrument or that is this will snap and moving coil will fall down and there will be no indications the fourth arrangement that we are having is indication arrangement now for the purpose of indication we can see that to the upper spring a mirror is attached now to this mirror what we will do is for example I have some light will be made to be ref reflect uh, I'll, uh, I'll see that I'll use some laser or some light I'll use and this will reflect on the mirror now as this light is incident on the mirror some reflections it will throw back some reflections and this reflections will be on a scale the, from this diagram it is quite clear that now this mirror is attached to the upper suspension a light source is there light source is uh, uh, making a light incident on the mirror and because of the angle of the mirror that is there will be difference that is the reflection there will be different different reflections that is for example if the mirror is in this manner reflection will be in this direction so there will be different reflections there will the, it will make and this reflections it is on a calibrated scale a scale is kept and on this scale the when where the light is moving we can clearly make out what is the reading now for this this is the indication arrangement that we are having now uh, here the fifth arrangement is zero setting now on the top of this a zero setting arrangement is given so that if uh, I what I can do is uh, because as is it is as is a metallic part as this will uh, keep on continuously moving now when it is continuously moving there might be chances that the mirror is not the mirror is not facing in the front direction so what I can do is some screw type arrangement is there I can tighten it or I can loosen it to adjust the zero position now let us look at the torque equation for this uh, d arsenal galvanometer now we know that as i am using a magnet the force which is felt on the magnet is n b i l sin alpha as we have studied in physics n is nothing but the number of turns b is the magnetic field i is the current that is flowing through the coil l is the length of the coil and sin alpha sin alpha is nothing but the angle that is being made this angle that is being made it is called as sin alpha now here we can see that as we were discussing here uh, in the construction the magnet is radially shaped so when the magnet is radially shaped it means that it will give flux radially that is if this is center it will give flux radially so always we can see that this is like the tangent this is making a tangent so it is the angle is will always be alpha is equal to 90 degrees so sin 90 degree this will become 1 so I will get the force is nothing but NBIL force is nothing but NBIL now I have to find out what is torque we know that the torque is nothing but force into distance now NBIL is my force distance is D that is uh, what distance it is uh, uh, what distance it is traveling as as seen in the previous diagram distance d how much the uh, the uh, point is beam is moving d 
now what i will do is n b i l d now l into d we know that it is the area so it i am taking it into a sorry d is nothing but it is the uh, width of the coil d is not the distance it is traveling v is the width of the coil the le length of the coil and the width of the coil n is nothing but the number of turns in the coil i is nothing but what is the current flowing through the coil so we know that multiplying l into d i get area a so i will get n b i a the number of turns in a coil it cannot be changed the magnet that i am using in an instrument it cannot be changed the area of the coil it cannot be changed i only the value of i can be changed so we can see that nba these three values are constant so nba i am making it to be g where i am taking g is equal to nba so i know that my deflecting torque td is equal to g into i so as the ribbon i am using it is acting like a sort of spring it is acting so what i'll do is the controlling torque is because of tc is equal to k into theta F. so as we have discussed earlier also in moving ion instruments in moving coil instruments we know that the deflecting torque and the controlling torque will be equal at that position i'll get a steady steady point a steady point or i'll get uh, the pointer will be steady at that position where deflecting torque and controlling torque are equal so here we don't have a pointer so instead of pointer the beam of light uh, it will be steady at a particular position now that is because of td is equal to tc now what i'll do is i'll substitute these two values of td and tc so i can make it out that theta f is equal to g by k into i solving it so it clearly denotes that theta f is directly proportional to i that is for example so this from this it is quite clear that for example if i am giving plus 5 volt or sorry for if i am giving plus 5 ampere what will happen uh, for example theta will move in this direction this is the center position okay now if i am giving minus 5 ampere what will happen pointer will move in this direction so it is clearly understood that this is not applicable for ac because if i am supplying ac what will happen my pointer will keep on fluctuating so this is not applicable for ac therefore as i have said d arsenal galvanometer it is only applicable for dc uh, dc supply okay now moving further we will be discussing about the next type of galvanometer that is a vibration galvanometer so vibration galvanometer is a, a slight modification of my uh, d arsenal galvanometer now the thing is that vibration galvanometers are used for ac currents uh, that is d arsenal galvanometer it was used for dc vibration galvanometers will be used for ac currents now this is uh, here also similarly as in the previous case we had a moving coil now this moving coil it was rotating but here here also moving coil is there this moving coil it will be vibrating so that is why it is called as a vibration galvanometer now looking at the construction uh, we can clearly make out that there are five parts that is moving coil permanent magnet bridge piece pulley and spring pointer and scale now let us look how these uh, elements are used for a vibration galvanometer now the first element that we are used was a moving coil so as 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 i have said moving coil this is my moving coil that is on this loop a moving coil is there and on top of this moving coil a mirror is placed right so in so below this mirror a moving coil is placed this is the first part so the moving coil is very similar to the previous moving coil that is as we had in a d arsenal galvanometer here also a former will be there on this former the coil is wound similarly same manner so as i am using a metal former because of that i'll be having eddy current dampings also i'll be having then we use permanent magnets so powerful permanent magnets will be used so it is quite clear from this diagram we are having permanent magnets then a bridge piece is there so bridge piece is nothing but it is a small piece uh, that is uh, two small pieces are kept on the loop that is a wire is passing now consider this to be a wire now on this wire two pieces are kept that okay so these two pieces it can its direction can be moved that is it can be moved from it, it can be moved in uh, towards the towards the upward direction or towards the downward direction now why this is used we will be discussing in the well, in few minutes we will be discussing so this, this bridge pieces two bridge pieces we are having then we have the pulley and spring arrangement so pulley is nothing but for example for tightening this wire for tightening this wire what i will do is a pulley is kept that is this wire is moving in this manner now so to tighten this 
pulley is there that is this wire it can move that is wire movement can be done also a spring arrangement is there now this spring arrangement is for tightening the pulley that is for pulling the pulley back backward that is a pulley is there now on this pulley a wire is rotating and on this we can see this spring arrangement is fixed to a wall so this is trying to pull the pulley to this direction to create tension now uh, we might have seen a sort of toy that is two wires are there a center piece is there now what we'll do is we'll just rotate this uh, uh, one hand will i'll be holding here one hand i'll be holding here and i'll be rotating this and what i'll do is i'll stretch both the hands here so we can see here that the center piece a rotation will be happening in the center piece so normally this toy uh, children you um, uh, we they get it at in fairs or in some toy shops we get so this type of instrument uh, or this type of toy all of us all of us might have played with this type of toy now the same principle is used here now what is done here is two strings are there now on this string a coil is kept now on this coil is kept tension for uh, increasing the tension what i am doing is a spring arrangement is kept now the toy that i was talking about now on this toy we can see here that if a big person is rotating more rotations will be there more rotations will be felt that is the distance that is the the distance between the hands of a big person uh, it is also affecting the rotation and or if a small or if a small child is playing the distance between the hands will be this so rotation that i am getting will be slightly lower as compared to the previous that is when an adult is rotating and when a child is rotating so same principle for adjusting the distance i am using this bridge pieces i am using the next arrangement that i am having is pointer and scale arrangement so as in the previous case a mirror is there now on this mirror a light is made incident now what will happen here is now this coil it will keep on vibrating now when it is vibrating what will happen for example first the light will go till here then it will go till here go till here go till here so here we can see here for example if a if a scale is being drawn for example if this is a scale the light is vibrating in between these two extremes so a band is formed so reading this band i can clearly make out what is the value of the current or the voltage that is passing through passing through this uh, coil now this is basically called as uh, um, this is uh, the light, light as in the previous case the light arrangement that we have used the same light arrangement will be using here now here we can see that uh, the this wire this wire is nothing but this wire is made up of fine bronze or platinum silver this uh, the wire this vibrating loop wire it is made up of fine bronze or uh, silver uh, or platinum silver now here we can see that this bridge pieces it is made up of ivory uh, these bridge pieces are made up of ivory and the position is adjustable as i have already said now here we can see that there are two different type of adjustments that is fine adjustment and coarse adjustment now how how to make this fine adjustments and coarse adjustments for making the coarse adjustments what we will do is the bridge pieces positions will be varied that is the bridge piece, pieces will be moved towards the front or towards the back and based on that coarse tuning can be done and fine adjustment that is by varying the tension of the spring by varying the tension of the spring or by using the pulley and spring arrangement what i can do is i can make fine arrangements i can make right now to understand this why fine and coarse arrangement is required to understand that now let us take the example of a swing for example a person is sitting sitting on a swing and he is trying to push it by himself now when he is trying to push it by himself one thing we can see that that is there is a natural frequency for this swing that is if i am matching this natural frequency i'll keep on go, going moving further further now for example if i am uh, trying to uh, pu push the swing but in such an order that it the natural frequency or the uh, 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 the natural frequency is and uh, not matching at that time we can feel that the speed of the swing is reducing now if natural frequency is matching speed will increase and if natural frequency is not matching speed will decrease this is ex uh, this, this can be clearly felt while swinging on a swing now same thing we will be using here that is here we will be having two frequencies we will be having that is the supply that i am using that supply will be having a frequency and this system that i am using it will be having a natural frequency now when these two frequencies are matched we can clearly make out that the band that is as i have said the band that is formed on the scale it will be 
more that is the amplitude of the uh, loop will be more that is loop will go to more extremes it will go that and if fn and fs that is the natural frequency and supply frequency if do, these two are not matching only small movements will be there if it is matching bigger movements will be there that is on the scale it is quite easy to measure the long movements rather than the short movements so what so for adjusting the uh, natural frequency of the system i am using this bridge piece and pulley and spring arrangement right so let us move on to the torque equation now here the torque equation we can clearly make out that i i is nothing but a sinusoidal quantity therefore i am taking it to be i m sin omega t so as from the previous case we can i can clearly make out that deflecting torque is nothing but g into i so here it is g i m sin omega t right now here one more thing that we have to make out here is that here there is no spring for controlling now the control is done because of what the control that is the movement movement was being made but spring but this uh, moving coil is coming to the center position why because of the weight because of the weight of this uh, material or because of the tension that is acting or because of the damping or because of the moment of inertia or because of the spring constant so all these things we'll be studying in control system so the con it is control is just because of the moment of inertia the damping and the spring action right so these three i am adding now these three it is j uh, it is denoted as j d squared j d squared that is moment of inertia then d d d by d theta that is damping k theta it is the spring constant that is uh, spring tension that is happening now uh, because of friction or because of the weight of the system all these things it will be the, all these uh, all these concepts will be studying in control system so we are not going to much detail how this uh, equation is formed now solving this equation we'll get two things we'll be getting we'll know that theta is directly proportional or the value of theta and the value of amplitude we'll be getting now as we were discussing we have seen one thing that is the amplitude should be maximum when the amplitude is maximum what will happen i can make the proper readings i can make or i'll be getting a larger band of light i'll be getting now how to increase the value of a amplitude now to increase the value of amplitude we can do two things what is the two thing either i can increase the value of the numerator or what i can do is i can decrease the value of the denominator right so with start, let us start with one so when i am talking about the numerator in my numerator i am having g i if i'll increase the value of g i'll get uh, the amplitude to be increased now what is g g is nothing but nba nba that is here we are having three three values we are having that is n n is nothing but the number of turns of the coil a is nothing but the size of the coil b is nothing but the magnet uh, the magnetic strength of the uh, that is uh, the flux density of the magnet that i am using now for example if i am increasing the number of turns now when i for example this was initially 10 turns when i am increasing the number of turns what will happen the area of my coil is increasing so this n and area both these are interrelated that is if i am increasing the number of turns area will increase now if nba right g is equal to nba now what i have to do is i have to increase my g now when n is increased a is increased so both these are interrelated now one more thing that we have to keep in mind is that when n is increased the total weight of the moving coil will increase now when the total weight of the moving coil is increased so it clearly means that the j value this j value in the denominator that will also increase so when g is equal to nba if i am trying to increase a and n my j value will also increase so which it means that i will not be able to that is uh, what i wanted i wanted to increase my numerator now when when i am trying to increase the numerator value by increasing n and a in uh, in due course we can clearly make out that denominator value is also getting affected so what i can do is i cannot play with n and a but what i can do one thing that i can do is i can increase the flux density b right so to increase the value of amplitude what i can do is i can change the value of g how i can change the value of g i can change the value of g by increasing the flux density the second thing i can do is the denominator term that i am having d omega square plus k minus j omega square i can decrease the value of this denominator term now how i can decrease the value of 
denominator term so as it is clearly mentioned that if i am increasing the number of turns and area that is if, uh, number of turns and area if i am increasing what will happen my j and damping it will increase right so what i can do is i cannot change these two quantities because if i am changing these two quantities again the numerator will get affected so what i can do is i can ch change the spring value or the tension value i can change that is if i am varying the way k that is if k is varies varied by adjusting its length and tension of the suspension of the moving system what i can do is i can try to adjust my denominator value as well that is for increasing g i have to play with b and to decrease the value of denominator i have to play with the value of k that is only playing with the value of k is possible now why i why, why i have to do this to get maximum amplitude one thing that is clearly understood is that the supply frequency it should match with the natural frequency now when supply frequency is matching with natural frequency directly i'll get increased amplitude values or for increasing the amplitude values what i can do i can increase b value of b or i can play with the value of k so it is clearly understood that k k is the spring constant that is the tension how i can adjust the tension as i have said fine setting and coarse setting by doing the fine setting and the coarse setting i can clearly adjust the tension so uh, by adjusting this i can clearly achieve higher amplitudes i can achieve now one more thing that we have to keep in mind is that vibration galvanometers can be used for a range of 100 hertz to 1800 hertz or 1.8 kilohertz up till this range vibration galvanometer is uh, can be used so this is this was it this was a two different type of galvanometers that we widely use that is d arsenal galvanometer for dc measurement and vibration galvanometer for ac measurement now when i am using a galvanometer as we all know that galvanometer is the very basic type of meter now this galvanometer it can be converted into an ammeter and it can also be converted into a voltmeter now let us see how these conversions are being made okay right so g this is my galvanometer to my galvanometer in shunt or in parallel i am collect connecting a shunt now what why i am connecting a shunt i want to make this to be an ammeter now what is the requirement of an ammeter and uh, the requirement of an ammeter is that the it should measure the value of current it means that through the meter maximum amount of current should flow now how to make this possible now to make this possible what i can do is what i'll do is i'll use a low resistance shunt i'll use which is added in parallel to my galvanometer now what will happen is for example if 10 amperes is flowing now my galvanometer it is it is not necessary that my galvanometer is designed for 10 ampere to withstand 10 ampere so what will happen is for example a very low value of resistance i am using now this resistance it will be less compared to my galvanometer now what will happen this will allow 9 ampere to pass through it and 1 ampere will pass through my galvanometer so it means that if 1 ampere is passing it directly means that the value of current is 10 ampere so in that manner what i can do is a shunt i can use using a shunt i can convert my galvanometer into a ammeter so this saves my galvanometer from overloading of current that is by the uh, how much parameter my galvanometer can handle so that much that much amount of current will only pass through the galvanometer that is i can vary the range of my galvanometer now we uh, look at let us look at the diagram from the diagram we can clearly make out that the vg vg is nothing but the voltage across the galvanometer now how i'll get the voltage across the galvanometer that is v uh, that is g into i that is g is nothing but the resistance of the galvanometer ig is the amount of maximum current that can flow through the galvanometer then the voltage across the shunt vs vs is nothing but is 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 the current flowing through the shunt is into s that is the resistance of the shunt s now we clearly know that the current this current i is coming from the circuit and this i is getting split into is and ig so as i have mentioned here i is equal to ig plus is we know that is is equal to i minus ig so this is my equation a b and c now we know that this is the voltage the voltage as in parallel branches the voltage will be equal so i can clearly make out vg is equal to vs now i'll just substitute it g into ig into s into is now here one thing that we can note here is that here the equation is in terms of ig here it is in terms of is now for changing that what i will do is as i have derived earlier is 
is defined in terms of ig now i'll just substitute it here so we clearly i get then um, the value of shunt is nothing but g into ig i minus ig that is for ig is the amount of maximum current that my galvanometer will allow g is the resistance of my galvanometer now these three values i cannot change but the value of i i can adjust that is for example if i am designing for 10 ampere or the ammeter is designed for 100 ampere i can change the value of i that is what maximum amount of current will flow through my or for which value i have to design my ammeter i'll be changing the value of i now based on that the value of s can be selected now the effective resistance of the ammeter now in uh, in this ammeter i can see that there are two resistances are there these two resistances are in parallel so solving that i get the effective resistance of my ammeter is ra is equal to gs divided by g plus s this is the value of shunt that is for what amount of uh, what ammeter i have to de uh, de uh, design for that i have to calculate this using this formula i can calculate what is the value of shunt and this is the effective resistance of the ammeter that is the uh, both the uh, resistance in parallel now here we can see that the value of ra will be very small why very small because we know that in parallel connections always the lowest resistance value for example if this is my parallel connection always the effective resistance that i'll be getting its value will be lower than the lowest value so here we already we have selected a lower value so it clearly means that the value of resistance will be very small now as the value of ra is very small which means that the current through the circuit will re will remain unaffected how it will remain un unaffected the galvanometer it will only allow what amount of current can pass to the galvanometer so it is remain unaffected and this arrangement can be clearly used to convert a galvanometer to an ammeter the second type of conversion that we can make is conversion of galvanometer to a watt meter now for this what i have to do I have to do is i have to measure all the volt now here we can clearly see that a high value multiplier a high value multiplier is added in series with a galvanometer so here we can clearly make out that all the current whatever current is there all the current is passing through the galvanometer now adding this high value resistor in series it will limit the amount of current that is flowing through this part and because of this my galvanometer will again get F, uh, it, it will again get saved so here to make convert a galvanometer into a voltmeter what we'll do is we'll add a high resistance multiplier in series to the galvanometer now we know that this is the total voltage as this is the total voltage how we can find out the total voltage that is ig is the uh, current that is passing through the series path ig into the total resistance of the path is g plus rs so clearly i can clearly write that v is equal to ig in, ig into g plus rs now uh, equating this i can write it to be ig into rs is equal to v minus ig into g now based on this what i will do i can get is rs the value of rs will be v by ig minus g g is nothing but the resistance of the galvanometer v is nothing but for what value i have to design this voltmeter ig is the maximum amount of current that can pass through the galvanometer rs is the value that i'll be getting for example for 10 volt if i have to get i'll get one value of rs for 100 volt i'll get another value of rs i'll be getting now the effective voltmeter resistance the effective voltmeter resistance is adding these two as it is in connected in series so i get the value of rv is equal to g plus rs so in series connection we know that the value of the highest resistance the value of highest resistance the effective resistance will always be greater than the value of the highest resistance so based on this we know that the value of rv is very high so as the value of rv is very high through this path maximum current will not be flowing so it means that this will not draw more amount of current and using this arrangement i can clearly convert a galvanometer to a voltmeter so in this manner in today's lecture we have discussed about dc d arsenal galvanometer for dc measurements and we have discussed about vibration galvanometer for ac measurements and we have also seen how this galvanometers can be converted into a galvanometer can be converted into an ammeter and a voltmeter